Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Dees, this is my workshop, and today I want to tackle a problem that's kind of become an annoyance since I centered up my milling vise. The handle that comes with it, it's effective, it's strong, you can really crank down on things. The problem is when you need to rapidly move your vise in and out in order to clamp on a project, sometimes you're, you're changing out from a small part to a large part, and this thing is really a pain in the butt to use. You, the problem is you end up hitting your cross slide handle and then if you go in even further you end up hitting your wheel and that dents and dings it up and I don't like that. What I want to do is make a new handle for this and it's going to be a wheel style. Really it'll, it'll kind of be a lot like the quill handle here so the handle that will go on here will have the, there will be three handles that will be mounted at an angle so that they, when we're spinning the vise uh, motion in and out, it's not going to hit the y-axis cross slide handle and dent it up. So I'll use both at times. This will be really nice to kind of help crank it down if I need to, but the other one will be really nice so I can rapidly bring in my vise movable jaw in and out as needed. With that, we'll come over to the bench. I'll explain my plans. Maybe we'll draw it up a little bit and we will get started with making this project. Here's the plan. We're going to use this piece of steel and this is going to end up being the the main base that the handles will mount on. I'm going to use these pieces of round bar to make the handles. It's only going to be about five inches. Whatever this is, I'll cut two more lengths out of this. We'll put a threaded end on these in order to put them at an angle. And then ultimately, this, this will be the first order of operation. What I plan on doing is drilling and then boring a hole where this will have a press fit. And I'll use some Loctite to keep it in there. This will have a press fit and this is, gonna, this is a 14 millimeter socket and this is what will ultimately latch onto the device and be able to let me crank it in. Let's take some measurements before we get started cutting out pieces. There are some critical measurements in this. This will be something I need to actually pay attention to this time and not guesstimate. The angle of all three of the holes on the handle base is going to need to be uh, set at a certain degree and all three of the handles will need to be the same otherwise it will look silly. The other thing is the hole that I'm going to bore for this socket needs to be a thou or two undersized from this socket in order to press fit it in there and get it to stay otherwise when I go to turn and crank on the handle it could potentially spin. I may end up putting a set screw in where I probably should anyway mill a flat into this before I press fit it in there and that way I could put a set screw in here that will keep it from spinning. I think I will do that. If I don't I'm going to end up someday probably having issues. Just be some added insurance. It'll give me some more projects to work on or more tasks with this project. Seems like a really simple thing but what we're going to call this is the milling vise rapid handle. So.
I'm going to use a micrometer to accurately measure this socket. It is coming out with the digital calipers at 769 thou, but I want to confirm that with my micrometer. This micrometer is reading 750, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. So this micrometer is reading just under, just over 769. So 769 and one tenth. Let's measure that in another spot. If you, if you haven't seen these, seven. We know it's not 775. Seven. And then this is 25 increments, so we're at 19. So. 750, 769, and 1 tenth. It's got a vernier scale on it. Let's find another spot to measure that with and confirm. And this is measuring 769 and 1 tenth. So just over 769. I think I'm going to shoot for, I know I want it to be press fit, so. Let's see. I'll shoot for seven, seven sixty-five. That four thou might be too much. Four thou is like a piece of paper. It'd be on each side. I should probably go seven sixty-seven. So I'll do some looking on a traditional press fit gap that we're looking for. I think it's around 2,000. So barring uh, my research is different, we're going to go with 767. And then a press fit should work. Let me do a little research and I'll confirm that real quick. Well, my research actually shows uh, 1,000 per inch of bore. And this isn't quite an inch, so I think I'm just going to shoot for 768. And then Loctite, and then I'm also going to put a set screw in there. That's my final answer. That's what we're going to do. 768. Bore size is going to be... That's going to cover the bore size. The angle I determined that we're going to put on the front of the handle is going to be 30 degrees for our rod to attach to. These rods are half inch. Half inch rod, brown bar. So I need to make sure I've got a half inch of steel to come back on so that I can drill and tap for mounting these. So the handles will also have a flat on them. So the socket will need a, a flat. Let's draw that up. We have everything drawn up. You get the idea of what I'm trying to do. I've got enough information here to wrap my head around the project and get started on it. I think I'm going to switch up the materials, which will affect some of these measurements. I don't like the length of this piece. The other thing I don't like is the half inch. I was going for rigidity, but this half inch rod I think is going to be too much for this piece of steel. 
I'm going to end up, when I put a chamfer, my 30 degree on here, it's going to end up being too much. I mean, and this base piece may end up coming to a point. I suppose that's okay, but that's not what I want. There wouldn't be enough to thread in. I think I'm going to choose larger stock for this. And then I'm also going to choose thinner stock for the handle. I want something rigid, but I don't need half inch rod. So I'm going to switch up some of these materials, but the critical dimension that we measured is still relevant. That's the bore size. We're going to under, undersize it by a thou so we can get a press fit in there. I'm going to use Loctite, and then I'm also going to drill and tap a hole for a set screw and put a flat in the socket from the mill. I think we got a game plan. Let's get started. This is the plan. I'm going to use this plug. This was from that uh, large rod that I had that I cut off and I was just doing some test cuts and it had a real hard end. I'm going to make an attempt to bring this down. Let me grab a scale. I'll need an inch for that roughly and then I have the angle the angle for for the handles so I think if I turn that down I'm gonna leave myself I just don't want to cut it too short but I think what that will do let's go ahead and mark that so if I mark this two inches I think what what we'll be able to do my plan is to turn this down to an inch so I can use my collet on this and finish all the other operations I need in the in the mill and everything else. I think I'm going to go an inch and a half. That's only that's just over half inch. I'm going to go I'm going to give myself an inch to fasten it to a collet. And then the rest is what it is. So, let's mark that. So that's where I want to turn it down to. Yeah. Well, right at that line there. All right, I'm going to do my best to turn that down to an inch, and then we'll see if our collet fits. I have my one inch collet. So I'm going to turn this down to one inch, and then we'll test fit the collet, and then that, that part will be done. That's operation number one. Let's get started. This thing is inch and three quarter. I got three quarters of an inch to bring that. It's not quite inch and three quarter. But I got 700 thou to take off of there. Let's get started here.
I'll bring you back when I get this turned down to uh, about an inch and then we'll start recording again. For now I'm just going to take my time and go slow. This is a hard piece of steel. Probably not the best choice for this, but it's what I got. It's what I'm going to use. I told you I'd bring you back. We're about one inch, 129 thou, and I'm going to take off about 80 thou. Then we're going to check and see where we're at, and I'm going for an inch. Now, it's, it'll be on the, it doesn't have to be super critical, but I am going for as close as I can get to an inch because I'm going to use my collet. So let's keep going. I need to take off 129 thou. So let's take off uh, 80, 80 thou or so. We'll see how close we get. I'm trying to practice using my dial measurements because these are in metric. So I'm trying to understand. And I've got about, I've figured out about a half a millimeter on here ends up being um, about 20 thou on the dial anyway. So let's keep going. I'm going to go 230 thou passes and then a 20 thou pass and then we'll remeasure. We should be about 49 thou away. Let's see. So I think we're going to be about 50 thou over one inch. We were at one, one, two, nine. Let's see. Let's see how well I did. Oh, 51 thou. I'm, I'm getting, getting better with this. That's good. So I got about 50 thou to come off. We'll do two 20 thou passes and we'll reject. Should have about 10 thou to remove. 13 thou. 13 thou to come off. Let's take 10 thou pass and then we'll recheck. Let's see where we ended up. One thou over. I think that's going to be close enough. Let's check it with the collet. Oh, still a little too big. So we're, I don't have a bigger collet. I'm going to take another, another five thou off. So this will be undersized just a little bit, but I need to use that collet.
beautiful. What did we end up at? Well, I guess one thou over is a little too big for a uh, collet. Well, anyway, that's that's one inch. Now I'm going to be able to use my collet on here in order to do some other operations. I'm going to pause here. I want to do some thinking and make sure I got my orders of operations all set because one end needs to have the 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 board hole and the other is going to have the angle for the handles. I think I got my plans here. I'm going to drill and bore the hole for the socket as one of the last steps. I'm going to work on the angle now. I wanted a 30 degree angle for the handles that will be threaded into here and they need to be at least a half an inch in total thickness. Now here's the thing. I don't want to bore. This end is going to be the end that has the socket. But I don't want to bore through this end. This is very hard, this end. I don't want to bore through with uh, my drill bits any further than I need to on this material. So I'm going to make the boring of that hole the last order of operations. And I'm going to take it out, flip it over, and we're going to put a 30 degree cut on here. Hopefully I can get it down three quarters of an inch. I think that'll look, you know, we'll, t we'll gauge it. It'll be a half inch thick wide on the, the 30 degree chamfer, but I'd like to maybe go three quarters. We'll, we'll just measure it and see. So I'm going to flip this around, but before I do that, I'm going to chamfer these. These are pretty sharp edges, so I'm going to go ahead and chamfer those. See how that does. So let's keep going. Like I said, I'm going to keep going until I have a face that's, I'm hoping, three quarters of an inch, half inch. I just want to gauge and see see how it looks. I don't. You could probably hear there's something. I, I'm going to have to tear into this headstock. I think uh, this could be the last lathe project until I address whatever's going on in here. It is not sounding great. I don't want to get this project done, so we're going to keep going. Let's get the right direction. That will help.
three quarters of an inch. Let's get a half inch test rod. I should be able to drill and tap that just fine. All right, let's do a quick recap of where we are right now. Took that, that chunk of steel and got it turned down to a workable piece. Uh, this is going to end up being the outside where the handles connect to and the bore for the socket will eventually go down here where this nub is. We'll cut this off when we're ready to do the boring operation, but at the moment we are not ready for that. We are going to work on the handle. I have an idea and I'll explain it and then we'll see if it works. Uh, this is all new to me. I've never done this before, but uh, what we're going to use is our hex collet holder. Let's get that out of there. And if we were to open this out, I've got my inch call it. We already demonstrated that this fits. So what we want to do is get this snapped in here one way or another. We're going to put it in here. Okay. And then this will go, well, tighten it down. It's a pretty close fit. That'll go in there. We'll lock that in when we get it in the vise. And my idea is to use three of the six sides in order for the handle placement. And I'm gonna also use my angle blocks that I have, and we're gonna get this set at a proper 30 degree angle. And then this should be parallel to the quill, and I should be able to drill those holes. So that is my plan of attack for getting the three holes drilled where they should be and getting the handle portion of that completed. In addition, I still need to cut down these rods for my handles. We need to decide on a, a thread, uh, thread size. I'm not going to do half inch. That's just too big. I'll probably go down a notch, seven sixteenths or something like that. But that's going to be the next operation we do in the mill. So the, the mill will be taken over for this piece for now. And then we'll continue on with that. In the meantime, I've also got the socket. I said I wanted to drill a flat I'm, or mill a flat in this. I definitely I need to do that because I know no matter what I do and try to hit some... I'm, I'm, I'm working on being more accurate with my cuts. And I did really well with this. I got it right at an inch. Ended up having to go a little under about four thou under in order to get it in that collet, but that was intentional. Well, with this, I'm going to do very something very similar. I'm gonna use a 25, 32nd collet. Fits in there really nicely. We're gonna grab our square collet. that out of there. I've used this one quite a bit. I, I love this for milling flats on handles and things like that. Works really well. So we want to get same same thing. We're going to get this snapped in here. The socket now remember I want a flat and I want the flat not towards the front but I think more towards the back so what I want to do is put this in here something like you know see that's maybe half inch well I think I could do that but there's the idea we'll put this also in the mill and I'll run a flat across one edge of this and we'll make sure we index it all 
properly when we're ready to insert it into this. But these are ready for the mill setup. I just need to tighten these down once they're in the vise. Uh, again, this one is gonna be the three holes that we will then thread, use a tap, and we'll get those threaded for probably 7 16 And then this one we'll just be milling a flat on, and that'll complete this one. Then we'll reuse this collet to do the flats on the handles, and uh, we'll keep going. But anyway, I wanted to give you a little close up here, show you where we're at. I got this piece at this point, and we're ready to keep going. Got a few different operations to do that are independent before we start marrying things together. Like I said, one's a socket, one is this piece with the handle holes, and the other is to actually make the handles themselves. This will be my first one. I'm gonna, I'm doing 7 16 20 for my thread size. And I'm gonna use a die. And I think what I need to do is bring this down to, if 7 16 20 is 390 thou, I need to bring this down another four or five thou in order to have clearance in order to use the die on it. That's what I'm learning. So I'm gonna bring it down to 380 six thou and we're going to see how that goes i also want to bring this in maybe a half inch i don't need crazy threads on this thing um but i do want to make sure i get it to where it's in there far enough half inch is more than enough shot it but I think that's going to be fine. We're going to go with that. Okay. 
We'll do 40 more and we'll recheck. Take a skim pass off of that. This time we are going to thread these 7 16 20. Bring this out of the way. And I'm going to use my custom tailstock uh, die holder that I made. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. This was a fun project. I've used this many times. It's designed to go into a Jacob style chuck, which in there nice and tidy like oh got to loosen a little bit let me grab a an allen wrench here
Okay. And we just want to bring this in. It's kind of hard for you to see at that angle, but uh, we're just going to hand thread these and I'll use cutting oil. I'm going to use actually some drill hog. oil and we're just going to use a die and get these threaded. thread it but I'm not going to there we go now I can go in reverse here and get it out of there Might have messed up. If so, we'll drop down one more size in the thread. I think I took too, too much off. Yeah. I think I messed up. Let me regroup, see what the next size down is. Um, I overshot those. They should have been you know, 395 or 400 thou. I'm going to use I, I clearly overshot that. We are switching it to a 3 8 24 3 8 24 thread We'll see how that goes, because I, uh, I overshot these. I'm, I'm still figuring things out. Sometimes make mistakes. It's normal. But these are not crucial. It actually works out a little better that I haven't started on the handle base yet. So let's see how this goes. Let's put a little more drill hog on there. Let's see if we can get this going. Hopefully you can see. There we go. Come on. Go now. Not fighting. I'm going to flip this die around. Yeah. I'm going to flip this die around and then go all the way in. And then I'm going to test it. I think I have a nut. I want to test fit that before we do the other two. I think we can 
Maybe we do this. That's why I wanted to flip it around. It's still that last bit. Oops. And we broke free. Okay. Reverse it out of there. Check it out. Not so bad. That's that's better. I ended up, we're gonna do 3 8 24. Let's bring you down here. Trust me when I tell you, the threads look really good. They turned out real nice. So that's what we're gonna do, 3 8 24. Well, I'm going to end this video. I'm going to call it part one. This video is starting to become long, but it's it's the style of video I like to make. You know, I take my time. I work on my projects. Everything's subject to change. This one certainly has. But we're going to leave off here and call it part one. And then part two, I hope to complete the project. We are ready for milling operations. We need to put our three holes and drill and tap those for the handles. We got our handles made, not to final length, but they're made, they're tapped, or they're they're, di they're they're threaded and ready to go for this. We're gonna use the 3 8 24 tap. Those three handles, I would also, I'm gonna try to see if I have a, a recess. I might even just use a, an end mill, but I wanna recess counter bore it so when these screw on they they look have a really nice clean look we're going to use the angle block for 30 degrees to set the angle so that this face is parallel or excuse me perpendicular to the quill then we're going to mill a flat into the socket then we'll go back over to the lathe and we will cut the the portion off of the bottom of this one that that i'm using to chuck it up and we'll drill and and uh use a boring bar to get our final dimension for the socket. And then we'll bring this back over to the mill and I'll use my V-blocks in order to drill and tap a, a hole that we can then put on the flat. We also need to put a couple flats on the handles. 
so that we can tighten them down to the, the base piece that will go onto the that will go onto the vise handle. And then I think for now I'm just going to finish the ends with a chamfer, a slight chamfer, and call that good enough rather than make knobs for the end of them. I don't see that that's necessary for what I'm doing. I may do that later, but not for part two. Part two, I just want to complete the, the project and get done with it. Thanks for sticking with me this long. We're making some progress. I look forward to completing this project, and I think this is going to be super useful.